Hi guys, this is Dr. Surabhi and let us learn the tips and tricks of solving NEET PG MCQs on the topic Neonatal Reflexes. So starting with Neonatal Reflexes tips and tricks. The types of questions which are asked are first interpretation of reflexes in different scenarios, second component of Moro's reflex, third time of appearance of different reflexes whether in utero at birth or in infancy and fourth abnormal persistence beyond that is normal time of disappearance of the reflexes. Coming on to interpretation in different scenarios. Timely appearance and disappearance is suggestive of healthy term neonate. New reflexes are absent in depression of central nervous system or peripheral nerve damage. For example, unilateral morose is seen due to intranatal brachial plexus injury or fracture humus, humerus or clavicle. Abnormal persistence is because of lack of CNS maturation or arrest of cerebral growth, for example, cerebral palsy. It is important to note here that preterm infants have diminished reflexes with the decreasing gestational age also because of lack of CNS maturity. Coming on to the components of Moro's reflex, it comprises of sudden neck extension, abduction and extension at elbows which appears at 32 weeks gestational age and hand opening appearing at 28 weeks. And lastly, adduction and flexion at elbows and flexion of wrists and fingers appearing at 37 weeks of gestational age. So the reflexes which appear in utero can be remembered by the mnemonic. In utero, baby says grasp me, where G stands for grasp reflex, R stands for rooting reflex, S for sucking reflex and M for morose reflex. Reflexes present at birth can be remembered by the mnemonic baby paces at birth. These are the reflexes which first appear at birth. Thus, P stands for placing reflex, A stands for asymmetric tonic neck reflex, C, E stand for cross extensor reflex and S stand for stepping reflex. Reflexes which appear for the first time in infancy can be remembered by the mnemonic infant in midland equilibrates with a parachute soon where mid stands for midbrain writing reflexes land stands for landau reflex equilibrate stands for equilibrium reactions parachute stands for parachute reflex and the s of soon stands for symmetric tonic neck reflex thus reflexes present at birth are the one grasp me and paces that is grasp rooting sucking morose Placing asymmetric tonic neck reflex, crossed extensor reflex, and stepping reflex. Reflexes persisting the whole life can be remembered by mnemonic place parachute in mid equilibrium. That is, placing reaction, placing reflex, parachute reflex, midbrain writing reflex, and equilibrium reflexes. Abnormal persistence of rooting reflexes beyond one month, of morose is beyond six months and of asymmetric tonic neck reflex is beyond 6 months. This is a very busy slide and you can study it in detail and remember it by heart. Uh, otherwise important questions have already been discussed in detail in this powerpoint. So coming on to understanding the reflexes in brief. For Moro's reflex you must place your hand on the upper back and drop it back onto the mattress of by 1 cm. With this, the infant abducts and extends its arms and opens up hands followed by adduction and flexion along with opening of the eyes. This is elicitation of Moro's reflex. Rooting reflex. When the examiner places his finger on the cheeks or the corner of the baby's mouth, the baby tries to locate the same by turning its mouth towards that. Sucking reflex is when the examiner puts his finger into the mouth of the baby, he starts sucking it reflexly. Glabular tap is when the infant blinks its eyes when the glabella, which is the point between the nose and the forehead, is tapped. Palmer and plantar grasp are elicited with the head in midline. midline. The palm or the foot is stroked with the index finger introduced from the medial side, leading to reflex flexion and grasp. Placing reaction. 
Stimulating the dorsum of the foot at the undersurface of the table, the infant lifts its foot and places it on the table. Stepping reflex. When an infant's feet are placed on a flat surface, the infant makes crude walking steps. Gallant reflex. When the, with the infant lying prone on the examiner's hand, one side of his spine is tickled and the trunk incurves to that side. Perez reflex. When the infant in this spine, a finger is run from the sacral end of the spine to the cervical end, following which the infant extends its spine and may or may not pass urine. Asymmetric tonic neck reflex A supine infant's head with his shoulders flat is rotated to one side when ipsilateral arm and leg extend while the contralateral flex. Crossed extensor reflex one leg of a supine infant is extended and the plantar surface of its foot is stroked. With this, the opposite first flexes, adducts and then it extends as if trying to push the stimulus away. So let's revise the mnemonics. The time of appearance is in utero. A baby says grasp me. A baby paces at birth. An infant in midland equilibrates a parachute. Regarding the time of presence or persistence of reflexes, reflexes present at birth are grasp me and paces and reflexes present or persisting throughout the life are place parachute in mid equilibrium. Coming on to some example MCQs. So first is which of the following reflexes are not present at birth? Moros placing ATNR or STNR. Any guesses? Yes, the right answer is Symmetric tonic neck reflex. Unilateral morose is seen in healthy newborn, preterm newborn, cerebral palsy, or herbs palsy. Answer is again D herbs palsy. So these are mainly the questions regarding the neonatal reflexes which can be uh, asked uh, to you in your neat PT entrance examinations. Thank you.